Behold, I have kitten. This is how you get blessed with YouTube views, right? My family recently got a new cat, so welcome Oliver, or as I like to call him, Ollie, little Ollie boy. He's got plastic nibs on his nails because he would rip me to shreds by now. Let's see if he'll just stay here. Somehow we're already halfway through 2022, so today I am doing the mid-year book freakout tag. You can call this Tag Tuesday. Question one, best book you've read so far in 2022? Probably hands down, I would say The Lions of El Razan by Guy Gavriel K. This book was incredible and I want to read more by Guy Gavriel K. I've also started reading uh, this book, All the Seas of the World. I was sponsored by Penguin Random House in one of, in just my last video. Uh, what are you doing? Ollie, what are you doing? He really likes the Stormlight Archive. Let's take you off the shelf, little guy. Do you like my jungle shorts? I have been meaning to read Guy Gavriel K for a long time, and I finally decided to start, and I have been enjoying his work so much. His prose is honestly like top tier. I can see him being one of my new favorite authors, and Penguin Random House recently sent me uh, this book, and it was perfect timing because I've just been getting into Guy Gavriel K. I cannot wait to read more by this author. Oliver, where'd you go? Best sequel that I've read so far this year. I don't think I've actually read a whole lot of sequels. Oh wait, we're currently doing the Percy Jackson read-along on my Discord server. And The Sea of Monsters, that's a sequel I really enjoyed. I do think I liked the first book a little bit more though, but Sea of Monsters was great. I thought it was a lot of fun. It's kind of shorter uh, compared to the other books. But The Titan's Curse, I think is probably my favorite upon reread so far. I haven't read further yet, but I am having such a fun, just nostalgic blast rereading these books. It's been over 10 years since I've read them. Uh, and it's been fun rereading them with you guys. And I got some Percy Jackson videos that I need to make soon. Dude, what are you doing? And now he's biting a cord. Okay, Oliver, come on. Why do you gotta be so rambunctious? New release you haven't read yet, but want to. Uh, Brian McClellan has a new book called In the Shadow of Lightning, I believe, and it's in a brand new series called The Glass Immortals. This is the same author of the Powder Mage trilogy, so I definitely want to check this one out at some point as well. I've been hearing some mixed things so far, but I still want to give it a read. The first two Bloodsworn books by John Gwynn, those have been on my radar since they came out, and I would like to get to them at some point because they sound amazing and I love the covers. Oh, and uh, The Stardust Thief by Chelsea Abdullah. This is one that sounds really interesting to me. It's inspired from 1001 Nights. It involves a legendary smuggler and a cowardly prince who go on a quest across the desert to find a legendary magical lamp. I really love desert settings. I, I love 1001 Nights, so this sounds like something that I would be interested in. Most anticipated release for the second half of the year. Uh, Tad Williams has a new book coming out called Into the Narrow Dark, which is returning to the world of Austin Ard. I believe this is the third book in the Last King of Austin Art series. So I got some catching up to do. Uh, I have to finish the uh, Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn series by Tad Williams. But nevertheless, I'm excited for this book because I love Tad Williams' writing and I can't wait to read more. Biggest disappointment. Don't call me out like that. Honestly, I haven't really been disappointed by too much that I've read this year so far. I'll mention one that I was kind of disappointed in, but also I really enjoyed. I was mildly disappointed in. I've been trying to get into Roger Zelanzi's writing uh, recently, and I just, I can't start The Chronicles of Amber because I have too many series on the go. This is a, a pretty long series, so I decided not to start that yet. So I picked up instead a collection of his short stories and essays called Unicorn Variations. And I really enjoyed it, actually. Roger Zelanzi is is just really good at writing short stories. I think he does an excellent job. And there's a lot that I, I loved about this short story collection. But a lot of these were very experimental. Not all of them hit. There's a few that just didn't really leave much of an impression on me at all. Uh, but there's some that I really enjoyed. The title short story called Unicorn Variations. Zelanzi was inspired to write from a conversation he had with George R.R. R. Martin. It involves a man who must beat a unicorn at chess for the fate of humanity. He's allowed weeks in between his moves and Bigfoot ends up being his, his coach his chess coach. Griffins show up in the tavern to drink beer and cheer them on. 
uh, yeah, it's it was a very weird story, but at the heart of it, it has a lot of uh, hopefulness to it. The thing is, I felt like the happy ending here was just a little bit too convenient, but otherwise, I did enjoy it. But his essays and how he reflects on fiction uh, makes me confident that this is a writer with a lot of skill, and I want to read more by him. So if you have any recommendations, let me know in the comments. Biggest surprise for me, that's gonna have to be Berserk. This is a epic dark fantasy manga series, and. I I am really enjoying it. I, I tried getting into it before, and I I thought it just wasn't a manga for me. It seemed, you know, a little too dark. I wasn't really feeling it. I didn't like the main character. I just did not give it a fair enough chance, because now I am really enjoying it. I made a whole big huge review on the first arc, the Black Swordsman arc. I put so much into that review. I would say it's one of my best reviews that I've made, but then YouTube had to go and curse me with little views. It was very depressing. Nevertheless, I will be making more Berserk videos, I'm enjoying it that much, and I want to make more manga-related videos in general. I have now started on the Golden Age arc, which is so much better. Like, I thought I liked the Black Swordsman arc. The Golden Age arc is where things actually start, and I'm I'm really enjoying it so far. I want to make a video on that as, as soon as I can. Favorite new author, debut or new to you? Uh, Guy Gabriel K. Uh, hands down, that's... He's now one of my new favorite authors, and I want to read all of his books. Newest fictional crush. I don't really have fictional crushes. Newest favorite character. That goes to Guts from Berserk. Uh, I, d I didn't really like him at first. You're not really meant to like him. He is a very cynical and selfish and angry character, but there's so much depth to him, and there's, a, there's just a lot going on. He's very complex, and I really enjoy reading his story and getting his origins. A book that made you cry like a little loser. Uh, for me, that Project. would be Hail Mary by Andy Weir. This book is incredible. Honestly, I enjoyed reading this so, so much. I would highly recommend this book to any sci-fi fan or any fantasy fan that wants to get into sci-fi. I'm also a big fan of The Martian by Andy Weir. That was fantastic as well. I never read any of his other books, but this one is like my favorite sci-fi book that I've read. So far, anyway. A book that made you happy. Well, this one did make me happy as well, so that that's another one I could mention. Another book that made me happy is The Emperor's Soul by Brandon Sanderson. This is a Cosmere novella, and it was one of the few Cosmere stories I had left to read, and I think it's Sanderson's best novella out of all of them. The magic system was incredibly interesting and unique, and I really liked Shay as a character. I felt like I was able to see growth in her, even though this was just a short novella and not a full novel. Most beautiful book you've bought so far this year, or received. Uh, for me, that would be All the Seas of the World by Guy Gavriel K. Again, I love the overlay of stars in the sky that is also on the waves. I love the blue and green hues and how the orange kind of contrasts with that. It's a gorgeous cover. Just look at it. I also picked up Killing Commendator by Haruki Murakami. I've liked uh, a few of Murakami's books so far, and this book I thought was pretty interesting. I got it for $10, as you can see, it was on sale. Uh, it's not the most beautiful cover, but I just thought it was cool that it has, you know, this Eye of Sauron on the spine there. And when you take off the dust jacket, there's like a moon and an eye which is kind of cool. I love when books have a secret underneath the dust jacket. What books do you need to read by the end of the year? So, so many. Uh, more, more Dresden Files. More Wheel of Time. More Discworld books. I, I would also really like to get to the Twelve Kings of Sherakai because the author sent me, like, his entire series, and I want to start reviewing those books. The Sword of Kaigen. I want to do a read-along on my Discord server for that book because it sounds amazing, and I want to read it with you guys. I need to finish the Mistborn Era 2 books before the fourth one comes out. If I have the time, I would like to read Red Rising by Pierce Brown. I also want to get to the Live Ship Traders by Robin Hobb. There's so many books books, but so little time. I'm coming to the realization I'm never going to be able to read everything I want to before I die. That is the tragic life of a book reader. So that is the mid-year book freakout tag. Let me know your answers to all these questions in the comments, or if you want, just let me know which books you need to read before the end of the year, and I'll see you guys in the next video.